The simulation we showed that the mouth was not covered, and therefore it was a very powerful car. It could go very far. But you also see our other animations. When you would put just a tissue, or a hand, or a fist, you know, or elbow, you can reduce the travel distance of those droplets a great deal. And by doing that, you know, the droplet wouldn't go like two meters, it might just be like one meter or less than one meter. Ventilation systems on most commercial airlines are specifically designed to circulate air. Air in the cabin is refreshed every four minutes through HEPA, or high efficiency particulate air filters, which according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, removes 99.9% .9 of all germs. But within those four minutes, air has usually mixed across three rows in front and behind. Possibly even as much as five to seven rows if people have been moving along the aisles. So you can see that the cough or talk, the droplet is go up to the uh, ceiling level. Then the ventilation system bring it down along the walls of the window and to the floor level, and then it could really go to the other side of the aisle, and then finally form this mixing condition, which means uh, the seat next to this uh, sick passenger is a very high-risk seat. But you also see from this seat map, passenger seat as far as the seven seat could get infected. So we also suspect that the, the, the wake caused by a walking passenger or a walking flight attendant could bring these particles very far. Professor Chin Yan Chen and his team have designed a new ventilation system that doesn't mix the clean air in the cabin. Rather than from above, it's supplied from below, directly into your breathing zone. Then, when you breathe out, the contaminated air rises and is extracted at ceiling level. So as a result, you are not sharing the air with your uh, neighboring passenger. With our new design, we anticipate that we could reduce the risk of infection by about 50%. Something I hope that the um, airplane manufacturers are willing to implement. I was interested to note the study you did on the toilets. The evidence has already shown that a sick patient, when they go to the toilet, the stool and the urine contain the coronavirus. Now in an airplane, the toilet is designed in such a way they can vacuum very hard. So if you don't close the toilet lid, and those small droplets will get into the air. And of course, when this sick passenger leaves the toilet and another passenger enters into the toilet, and that's very dangerous. So it's very important you should keep the toilet lid down when you flush, just for the benefit of fellow passengers. Boeing uh, has uh, worked with other people, try to use UV light to kill the germs in the toilet. And I believe that's a very good measure and that will help. So when we're back on planes, how will things be different? As you can see, the most of US major airliners are asking passengers to put masks on. And some of them also leave the middle seats open. And I think this is a very important first step for the airliners uh, to take those measures to mitigate the uh, risk. I have to say that nothing is bulletproof. When you travel, you always have a risk. And risk is not only occurs in the air cabin. It could occur in the terminals, could occur in the buses or the subways. We hope that the airliners will take proper measures as I have described here. And this will be very important for building the confidence and the passengers.